Hi, everybody. Welcome to the second episode of the Philly Film Brothers podcast. I am Chris Pierdomenico here with my brother Dave Pierdomenico. Uh, we have just recently seen Avengers Infinity War, so as promised, we're going to uh, talk about our reactions to it, um, you know, specific things about the movie, and also uh, sort of where we see the, uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe going from here. Uh, I do want to preface that we are going to be, this is, go- this is going to include spoilers, so if you have not seen the film yet, I, I to, strongly... To turn it off right now. Turn this off right now. Run for the hills, don't listen one more second. Yeah, I mean, unless you want it spoiled, I, I ran into a couple people that wanted me to tell them what happened. Really? Yeah. I call those people idiots. I know, of course you do. But I mean, not everyone is as passionate about. But, but who's who's even listening to this podcast if you haven't seen it? Like, if I haven't seen it, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna intentionally avoid anything that has the name Infinity War on it at all, just in case something's accidentally spoiled, or even in the comments, someone might spoil something. I I knew somebody that said that he was reading an article about the movie. He hasn't seen it yet, and mm-hmm. this is somebody that has had things spoiled for him before, and he said that they had revealed something pivotal about the movie in the article, and then he couldn't stop reading, and he felt upset that it was spoiled for him. So I think people are sort of... It's sort of like the how the bugs are attracted to the light. You know what I mean? Well, it's like, their own fault. Well... If I haven't seen a movie yet, I stay off social media, I stay off the internet, but it's also the reason why I try my hardest to see it opening night, so there's no risk of that. Yeah. Just today... On Facebook, I saw some idiot post uh, the poster of Infinity War and then the word dead over the characters that didn't make it. <laughs> just posted it out there on Facebook for the world right. to see. So it's, I, not, it's not even like it's an article to read. You just see that image and you know I right bet, away. <laughs> I bet I bet that person is very popular. Probably. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, so yeah, spoilers ahead. Um, you know, definitely come back. And listen to us once you have seen the movie. We would love to hear uh, what you agree with with us, what you disagree with. And, uh, and yeah, so let's get started. So, um, wow, what a night that was. Um, I think that's the best word to describe it. Yeah, wow. Wow. Yeah. Um, so let's, why don't we just talk about the hype? So the big thing on our, our last show was we talked about, you know, this this is a lot to live up to. Um, this is the... The, the culmination of everything they've been setting up for 10 years. Um, it is as anticipated, maybe second only to, like, Star Wars Episode One. Probably. Um, you Fortunately, know. this was nowhere near what Star Wars Episode One was. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah. This lived up to it and wasn't terrible. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. So I, I, I would agree it definitely lived up to the hype. Is it a perfect movie? No. No, but... it... It it also it, it had a lot of challenges. It 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 had to juggle the most characters of any of these films so far, and it had to do that well. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so it did live up to the hype. Um, you know, did I get everything I wanted out of the movie? No, but you know, we also have another Avengers movie coming out in a year where they may do things that uh, maybe we wanted them to do in this movie and they didn't do yet because they just simply didn't have the time mm-hmm. um, to fit it in. But um, I I do I will start off with saying I, I did think they handled the multiple characters very, very well. They they did it well because they realized that you couldn't just have all of them in one place at once. It would be too much. So it, it, it felt, uh, in my review of it, I, I compared it to almost like a Game of Thrones episode where on in Game of Thrones you jump from, here's this place with these characters doing something and then we're going to jump to this other place with these characters. So we had like different teams. We, we had... Uh, uh, we we had the Iron Man, Doctor Strange, Spider Man team. Yeah, and then they eventually combine with Star Lord and the Guardians, uh, Drax, uh, Mantis, Mantis, and yeah. uh, no, it was just them. Yeah, and then you had the, of course Thor going off with Rocket and Groot, right? Which was just really cool. <laughs> that was fun to see the, yeah. them interacting with each other, and then you had the big big battle group. In Wakanda, right, with the rest of them on Earth, right, and and these groups are not limited to to just the characters in there because there's there's crossover uh, between the, even the groups themselves. Um, what I really like is that you know I know and I think you men- mentioned last time not um, not every character can have an arc in this, but what I like is that 
every character has an emotional moment in this movie. Yes. Um, which was really, really cool. Like, for instance, like, Drax, um, you know, he has, like, a couple lines here and there, but when, when you see, like, they're, they finally come across Thanos, and he's kind of hiding in the back with the other Guardians, and he's, like, he's ready to kill Thanos because he killed his family. He he was the one in back in the first Guardians. He's the, at, at the very end. Drax even said, "Thanos is the one I really have to kill." He's been thinking about it since yeah. all the way back then. And and to see to see that little callback to kind of the reason why Drax is in the Guardians to begin with, I, I thought that was very satisfying. It was to get revenge for for the deaths of his family. Of his, yeah. Um, so I, I thought, you know, little moments like that where, yeah, you have to see the other films. And Oh, you definitely. I would not go into this one blind. No, you can't. No. I thought it did a great job of picking up where previous ones left off. Like, Thor's ship picked up right after the end of Ragnarok. Yeah. Most unfortunately for them and everyone on that ship. Yeah, I... God, they, they, I... they pulled an Alien 3 on, uh, on all them. <laughs> I, I struggled with that, and that's, um, I really hope that Thor Ragnarok was not for nothing, because it, like, I, I really love that movie. I did, too. I actually, I just rewatched it this morning. Oh, actually. did you? Yeah. And, and to, you know, you, you leave, you, you finish watching Thor Ragnarok, and you have hope, like, the Asgardians are going to be okay. They have their king, Thor's going to lead them to salvation. Yeah, and even Lo- Loki's going to be, like, hey, Loki's kind of come mm-hmm. around a little bit. But then they, and they then, just... They get massacred, and, and in in one sense, do we know that they all got massacred? I mean, I think it's implied. I mean, everyone on the ship was dead except for the the few of them. I I think it's heavily implied that Thanos did kill them all. But we we don't know what happened to Valkyrie. We don't. What was the rock guy? I can't think of his name. Korg. Korg. Played by Thor Ragnarok's director Taika Waititi. Oh, really? I didn't. Know yeah, that. he's the director. That's funny. Um, you know, we didn't we didn't see those characters. Um. But I, I'm, I'm just hoping that it just would feel like Thor. I, in one sense, I think it was great that hey, they got their happy ending. And Thanos is that bad that he um, he ruined it. He, he, he ruined, ruined their it. happy he, ending. He, he ruins a Marvel movie in a way. Uh, in, in another way, I almost like the way it went because it makes Thor a kind of more tragic. And I mean, I mean, he was sympathetic before, but even even more so now, he's the last of his kind. He's like the Superman of the MCU. Yeah, yeah. So that, I think that gives his character much more drama certainly... and depth and and uh, all the more room for redemption later. It, it raises the stakes, and it, it's funny you mentioned Superman because you, you think back to Krypton, and that's the whole, uh, the, the, the end, the destruction of Krypton is what starts Superman on his journey, but, you know, anytime they've gone back to Krypton, we haven't really cared that much. No, we, we didn't really know anybody, and I think because we knew Asgard, because we knew we, we got the, to see him there for for three movies, three movies, uh, and you know because of that, I, I think it's that much more tragic. And and Thor very much is a Shakespearean character anyway. We just got done. We watched. We rewatched um, the first Thor last night. Oh, and, you did. Uh, I hadn't really seen really underrated. It's I. I don't know. I. It felt kind of. I'll be honest. I felt a little bored. Watching wow. it, but it introduces Loki, and it has the best, uh, it has the best musical score of any yeah. of the Marvel movies I, at that I, point. It has a lot of good going for, it, but I, I don't know because Kenneth Branagh always uses Patrick Doyle to do his music, and it was brilliant. So, so anyway, so back to Avengers. Um, yeah, I struggle a little bit with that, although I think it showed Thanos' power. Um, like I said, I think that we had emotional moments with uh, a lot of the characters. Um, I was kind of annoyed. I feel like Star Lord screwed it up. Basically, yeah, everything was his fault. Um, but I I've heard some criticism about that scene, about like that it felt almost out of character for him. But the thing is, Star Lord, he's not Thor. He's not Iron Man. He, he is impulsive. Yes, he is the type of person to be dealt an emotional blow like that. And not be able to contain himself. I mean, we and we have seen that before. We have. I mean, we, when when uh, Guardians two, when 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 uh, when he, e- Ego says, you know, it broke my heart to put that tumor in your mother's brain. He just shoots him. <laughs> no questions, just reactionary right yeah, away. So yeah. I feel like that's very much in line yeah. with the Star Lord. But he didn't have the other Avengers there saying, "Hang on, it's can you wait five seconds." 
we almost have it off. No, but in that <laughs> moment of, of of emotional turmoil for him, he's got blinders on. He he's not he's not really seeing or hearing anything else in the room. Yeah. And impulsive people are like that. Yeah. I guess so. so I'm like, come I, on. Yes, it was very frustrating. Come on, to Quill, see. come on. But to be fair, had had he uh had he not done that, movie would have been a hell of a lot shorter. <laughs> Well, you could also argue with Thanos have just very easily gotten the gauntlet back in some way. I mean, he was already... We we knew that Thanos uh, was powerful. Uh, up until this point, we had not seen much of him at all. We saw a glimpse of him in post credit scenes, and we got a couple scenes of him in the first Guardians. But the moment this movie demonstrates just how much power he has, even without the gauntlet, was when he beats up the Hulk. Now... To be clear, he had... Didn't he have the Power Stone at that point? Like, had he already gone to Nova Corps? He had. So he, he had the strength <laughs> to battle the Hulk at that point, right? Now, is it clear that he's using it in that fight, though? Because it looked like they were just fist fighting. And the Power Stone is really more about, you know, I can destroy this planet with one touch. Uh, it's like Death Star kind of thing. Something like that. At least that's my understanding. I'm sure um, we're, we're, we're going to get, you know, blasted by comic book fan saying, yeah. no, nah, the stone really does this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, as, yeah. as far as my understanding... Don't alienate our fans, <laughs> okay. Dave. As, as far Jeez. as my understanding of the stone is that that's what... And maybe he used it for that. But the, the point is, he was very powerful. And even before he had the stones, this was a guy who still had the power to travel from planet to planet and wipe out half the population. So you're already dealing with someone who's immensely powerful as is I, I thought that was cool I love the call the the, the Hulk battle was great um, I, I love the call back to the first Avengers split. and it's now Loki, and it's Loki saying, saying we have a Hulk we have a Hulk and just I don't know it was very satisfying seeing Hulk just beat the crap out of Thanos yeah like it, I, at me it was kind of like man you killed all the Asgardians you're just gonna get the crap kicked out of here you. comes and it, Hulk and it was very much it was very akin to I think when Loki got beat up by Hulk in the mm-hmm. first one very much so um I I just I really like it was funny um I just thought it was it was very good um you know let's we got to talk about Loki's death a little bit um so yeah Loki dies spoiler um, very not even five minutes in now this is the the third time he's died. Yes, he fell into the uh, nothingness of space in the first Thor. Yeah. He was stabbed in Thor: The Dark World, and then and then this. So he he's already come back twice. And I, as I, I think this is it for him. As much as I love Loki, and as much as he's one of my favorite characters in the MCU, I hope he stays dead. Just because the more times you you bring people back, you you take all the gravity and the weight out of their death. You you make it meaningless. Well, and I think this death meant something, you know, more so than the last two times, where you know you kind of, and I get why the the, the character is in many ways an antihero. Um, it's and, certainly become one, yeah. And I think to you know people have grown attached to him. They love him as a villain. They love him when he's a good guy, and they kind of see you know. And you're still never quite sure what side he's on, but he dies. He for dies the, pro- trying to protect Thor. Protect Thor. And, and just everything they've been through. Um, and that's the thing. If you haven't seen... You, the only way you fully appreciate this movie is if you see the other movies. Because in a lot of ways, th- these are just merely <clears throat> extended scenes of the previous movies. Very much so. Even uh, going to my other point about, about previous movies, so much of Civil War plays into this. Yeah. At the beginning, where... The Avengers, uh, when 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 Thanos comes, the Avengers are at the weakest they've ever been. Yeah. I mean, even after uh, I I don't know his name, but Tony, the the member of the Black Order that Tony calls Squidward. <laughs> I'm just, just going to call him Squidward. I didn't look. I those are I like, don't know his real name. Th- those are Thanos's kids. I, I felt like they were fighting like the Koopa kids. Little bit. They never you know, say their names. They never say their names, and they're kind of amusing. But I I kind of. I mean, I get they didn't have a lot of time to develop them, but they were just kind of they, mindless they villains. Did. So when when even when when he comes down to get Strange, even then Tony is still reluctant to call Cap. Yeah. Because the the the, the damage and the wounds from from Civil War are still very much uh, uh, there and and fresh and and even I I love that we got that brief scene with the uh, with Rhodes 
and uh, Secretary Ross. Yeah. When he's saying, well, I expect you to arrest them when they show up at the facility. And Rhodes is like, no. Whole world, universe is at stake right now. Yeah. It's more no, important no, things. Nobody gives a crap. Shut no up. No one gives a crap about the Accords anymore. This is yeah. much bigger. Yeah, it's it's very much if you had added more scenes to the previous movies mm-hmm. and, and just kind of wrapping it all up, getting us into like an act two, act three, like climax kind of thing. And even this movie felt like it's really only the act two. Yeah. We still have that third act with the, with the next one. Um, so Thanos is a villain. Let's talk about that. Um, that was always going to be a challenge. Yes. It, you know, it, it's, it's difficult to relate to a villain that's very much like, ha 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 I'm going to destroy half I'm the gonna, universe. I'm going to troll my mustache as I, I take over the world of the universe. And I, and I think given that that is, you know, that's what the ultimate stakes are. I mean, a good story has a lot to do with how high the stakes are. And you can't, you know, at this point being the the most the most important Avengers movie to this point, um, you really couldn't go any... You, you, you couldn't you, go you any couldn't. less than trying to destroy, I mean, half the universe. Maybe maybe the next movie tries to destroy the whole universe. Well, it, it's about balance. Yeah. But I, I think they did the best job they could with that type of villain because we've seen villains before that wanted to just destroy everything. We saw that... Uh, we saw it with Ronan. She just wanted to destroy Xandar. The worst villain award goes to either him or... I, I gotta bring up Malekith from the Dark World. I don't even know who Malekith... That's the thing. I, exactly. I have no idea who these people are. The only reason I... I remember him is that he was played by Chris Eccleston from Doctor Who. And even Chris Eccleston went on to say the movie was terrible and he hated the makeup and he, you know, it was one of the worst acting yeah. decisions of his life. Right. No, and, I, I hear and that. And his goal was to delete the universe. I don't know how that's different from wiping out half. Like, is, is one well, I, using I, the delete button, one is using the backspace I, for half of I, it. I, I, I think Thanos is... is well, it's, it's interesting with him. Um, and I think you, you said, you wrote in your review, you said, you know, the best the best antagonists are ones that believe they're the protagonists. They do. And, they, they think they're the good guy. We saw that with Loki. We saw that with Killmonger. Not MCU, but Marvel related. We see that a lot with Magneto. There's a reason why he's one of the best um, comic villains ever. Vulture. Vulture was a very relatable guy. He wasn't trying to take over the world. He was just trying to provide for his family. And, and you know, his friends. You and know, his, his, friend, his yeah, colleagues. He, he was just trying to run his business. And yeah. he wasn't trying to kill Spider-Man because he was evil. He was trying to kill Spider-Man because he was in the way. Right, right. And in a lot of ways, that's very much like Thanos, is that he's you see that he almost has respect for the event. He knows who Tony Stark is, which I thought was very he, weird. He does. When that line, when he says, uh, I hope they remember you, yeah. we see that in the trailer. And it's in the trailer, I, and I'm sure many others, assumed that that line was going to be in a very sarcastic or condescending like m- mocking. context. Yeah. But in the scene itself, it's not. He has genuine respect for Iron Man. Yeah, and it's clear he knows some of his history. Mm-hmm. And, and and he says very generally, like, I, I hope the people of Earth remember you. You are brave and strong. You are a true hero, and yeah. you should be remembered for that. And that's, and, I, and I like it when you're not sure how much you like a villain or not. Mm-hmm. I think that makes a very interesting you villain. You know, you look look at his, his backstory on Titan. It was a society that grew out of control, and it collapsed. Look at our society today. Look, look yeah. at how much the world population has grown. It, it grows exponentially. It, it, it took decades to go from 5 billion to 6 billion. It took maybe 10 years to go from 6 to 7. It's going to take not much longer to go from 7 to 8. Yeah. And his plan was to simply wipe out half the universe and then the half that live would prosper. It's a terrible thing to think about. But... Well, it's it's very and it's it's funny, and we're gonna tie this into you know uh, the reappearance of Red Skull. First of all, that, that was the biggest uh, shock. That was the biggest of the shock whole of movie. This. I'm I'm like, is that Red Skull? Like, what is he doing here? That's what he's been up to since 1945. Yeah. But it kind of makes sense because I mean, the Thanos mentality is you know as as very much like a Hitler type character where he he's decided you know you know and they've they've called him before you that Thanos is a genocidal maniac but he's determining you know these people are not fit to live and they should be euthanized Thanos isn't targeting specific groups of people he just wants half wiped out 
And I don't know that he has such specific criteria for selecting what, which half. So it wasn't specific with who he just wanted to just... He just... Half of them gone. Yeah. And then the half that are left, you're good. Yeah, that's... And, but at, at the same time, just the, the belief that euthanasia like that... Is, is what's best for... Is what's best. And that and, and I'm going to say he has the right to do that. It, it's the assumption that he has the right to do that that makes him a villain. Mm-hmm. But if we look back at uh, medieval history... The bubonic plague in, in in the in the 14th century, yet wiped out a huge chunk of Europe, and people don't like to think about it. But Europe went through a period of prosperity after it happened, because there were before it, it was overpopulated, and there were too many people competing for too few resources. But in the aftermath of it, there were plenty of resources for the people that were alive. So that's I. I understand what Thanos' thinking is in that, well, no, if I wipe out half the universe, it will be better off overall. He, he, he certainly has a a certain... Um, he has a logic that makes sense to him. He does. It doesn't mean it's a right logic. No, it's it, not. It's, it's, it's certainly not a... It, it's a highly immoral logic. But he... But for some reason, he's... And I think some of the best villains have somehow rationalized themselves. Well, that, of course, and that's how they see themselves as the hero. Yeah. He sees it as... Not not just a job. It it's his duty. It's his mission to and, do this. And to tie that into, so he sacrifices Gamora to which spoiler, Gamora dies. Um, to to get the soul stone. You know, and um he you can tell that it's it's it, he doesn't hesitate to do it, but he's in pain about it. He's in pain and he, he loves Gamora, even though Gamora like I, he he's just he's he's a complex character. I thought it was, he is, it was interesting and, and he was a true threat. I, and I thought that's what made him such a good villain. I mean, you, you look back at villains like Malekith or Ronan, you never once really thought that the stakes were that high with them because you knew the heroes were going to beat him in the end because they were underdeveloped. You know, they, they weren't as interesting. Thanos, he felt like more of a threat than they did. And I don't know if it's because he was so uh, developed more so than they were. I don't know if it was because... This is the movie that we saw the most sacrifice in from mm-hmm. the Avengers. You know, it, it felt very much like... It, it it did very much feel like this was the Thanos movie. He was... You, you could argue he is the protagonist of the story. He's the one... In his own mind. I'm, I'm talking just the story itself. The yeah. definition of protagonist, he's the one trying to accomplish a goal. And yeah. the antagonists are trying to prevent it. Yeah. So he's the one setting out at the beginning of this film, I'm going to collect the Infinity Stones and I'm going to wipe out half the universe. And it's the Avengers who are throwing everything they have Whoa. to stop him. I think it just blew my mind, dude. <laughs> it's the same thing with the original Die Hard. Hans Gruber is the protagonist. John McClane's the antagonist, if you just look by the pure definition. Or, I understand that, but the Avengers' goal is to save everybody, and they're trying to stop the antagonist Thanos from wiping out half of everybody. I like my interpretation better. It's more interesting. I, I'm sure you do. Um, I, I can tell you, I... I kind of this was especially, uh, you know, it was pretty emotional when some of the the characters are uh, so. So spoiler alert again, Thanos does get all of the Infinity Stones. Um, I really liked what they did where you, uh, uh, Scarlet Witch, she has to she has uh, to kill Vision. Which was there any hint of that before that they were that something was going on? Um, um, I think. I mean, there was there was certainly a closeness in the comics. They're married. Yeah. In Civil War, there are moments of, uh, I mean, you, 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 looking back, you could interpret them as moments of intimacy between them when, you know, when, th- when, uh, when Vision's cooking for her. Yeah. There's, there, there's like a, almost like a, f- uh, like a flirtation between them. And then when, uh, in, during the fight, when Vision uses his power to stop her, and and it's you know causing her mind to you know split. He holds her and cradles her. Yeah. And it was in that moment that he shoots down Rhodes by mistake. And later on, uh, Stark says to him, uh, "You know, I I thought you didn't get distracted." And he goes, "I I didn't think I could either." He was distracted by Wanda. Right, right, right. So there was an emotion there, and I think this film did a good job of introducing them as a romantic couple in that. When we first see them, they're together in hiding. Yeah. And it sort of sets the precedent that that's been what they've been doing for the past two years. 
it's like that a Futurama episode when Amy starts dating Bender. I don't remember that one. <laughs> a, I think you saw more whole, of it than I it's did. It's a whole other tangent. But state dating robots. Pros and cons. Anyway, so moving on. Um, so we're talking about... Uh, it, it, it was a very emotional moment when she had to... Uh, you know, when she had to break the Mind Stone... Yes, and, and him with it. So break, yeah, breaking it, and then you realize, man, she sacrificed, and then you kind of hope, like, okay, we lost vision, but maybe everything's going to be okay. And then Thanos just reverses time with the time stone, and and does now, it again. Now here's what I was my my thinking in that moment when when she destroys the mind stone, killing Vision. I thought this is how it was going to end. I thought, oh, the mind stone's destroyed. This is going to end with Thanos being really pissed and saying, okay. I'm going to wipe out half your planet the hard way. You chose it this That's way. That's what you thought was going to happen. And then the next one would be him launching war and devastation on Earth. Yeah. That was my thinking in that moment. Yeah, yeah. I, in never in a million years did I think he would actually, spoiler alert, do it. Right. S- literally snap his fingers. Which I thought I, I thought it was, I mean, it's cool to hear, I'm not saying it's cool, but it, it's, it's interesting as that amount of power, but isn't it kind of convenient that some of these folks got to say goodbye to each other before they disappeared. Uh, it just felt very like even even in the post credit scene, um, where where uh, uh, Samuel Jackson, uh, what Nick Fury is the last one to disappear, and he's and he just gets to send an email to we we assume an to email Captain to Captain Marvel. Marvel. I kind of I kind of flash back to like. Uh, uh, Batman v Superman, or it's like, oh, here, here are the, here are the logos of uh, your superheroes. Well, clearly, <laughs> what you don't understand is that the Infinity Gauntlet, well, all the stones, it has to buffer, so it doesn't. When it wipes out half the universe, it doesn't do it all at once. Like, like it has to load. Does it have the latest then, Apple update? I don't know because I don't <laughs> think Thanos read the terms and conditions. <laughs> he just did agree. He just did agree, and the, and the terms yeah. and conditions was. You may wipe out half the universe with this device. Are the, you sure? The eye gauntlet, but it may take a few minutes. So, where? how do you know it has to buffer? Where, do, where are you getting this information from? I'm just making stuff up. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, you thought I was serious. <laughs> no, I thought you were serious. I'm like, is that... Is that in the... No, it was purely for dramatic oh, effect. Oh, gosh. It, yeah, oh, gosh. But uh, I know the, the, the fact that he was able to use the time stone, which brings us to another matter... Doctor Strange giving it up to him yeah. willingly, even after he said to to Tony, "If it comes to you or Spider Man or anyone else, I will protect the stone first. Well, and and I think just being, I mean, I, I think we do see some growth. Like that. it's interesting because uh, Doctor Strange and Tony Stark are quite similar. In fact, when I I saw the the Doctor Strange movie which I still can't wrap my head around, but I know in the beginning, he's very much Tony Stark. Very much so. Full of himself. Genius, yeah. but arrogant about it. And to kind of see them together and and not really have a closeness, like, you think, like, oh, like, he, he actually respects them. But I there's a lot of theories saying that, you know, Doctor Strange saw all the ways that this could end, and he knew that Tony had to stay alive. I did hear that one. Yeah. That, and, I, and I think that's probably true. That it, it was him making a rational decision that if Tony dies, we don't win because the only scenario where we won involves Iron Man one way or another. Right, 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 right. So, um, you know, but yeah, I mean, still very powerful moments when um, when he, when Thanos wins, essentially, and, and, and eliminates half the people. I mean, I, I thought the same Spider-Man, like, just kind of laying there, be like, I'm sorry, Tony. I mean, he, they've done such a good job, um, and the actor, uh, uh, Tom Holland, Tom Holland, um, just making that character really seem like a high school kid. He is. That and, is just in it's, it's way heart, over his head. It's heart wrenching to watch him almost calling out for for Tony's help. Like I I don't want to go. Help me. Yeah. And Tony's just sitting there completely helpless. Yeah. Yeah. Um. You know. I think even and it's a, it's a small moment, but when Rocket sees Groot disappear, I I almost was waiting for him to say like not again. Um. You know, after they'd lost mm-hmm. him in the first Guardians. Um. So. A lot of these characters that just kind of disappeared, like, you know they have sequels coming out. Like, there's the Spider-Man Homecoming 2 planned in July well, of 2019. There's been some debate whether he's going to be played by the um, the nephew of the, the Donald Glover character in the Spider-Man Homecoming. They there's, could recast it. They, they've they talked about that. that. In fact, I think that character is 
Spider-Man in a cartoon movie they're doing. They could. Um, I know there's a Guardians of the Galaxy 3 planned. Again, you could do that one and just have it take place before this, but then... Or you could have it without Gamora. You know, I don't know. Well, th- th- all the Guardians are gone but Rocket. No, oh, I, I understand what you're saying. So... Or you could... And, and that brings us to another thing. Ant-Man and the Wasp is coming out this summer. Yeah. Now, I, judging by it, uh, it looks like... I'm sure it takes place after Civil War, but before Infinity War. Why didn't they just release it before Infinity War? Because now, how can we watch that movie and have any real stakes in it? If we know, oh, this is what's going to happen in the end anyway. Oh, well, why did we have any stakes in the Star Wars movies or when they made the whole TV show, Star Wars, Clone Wars? We know who's going to die. We know what's going to happen. And those are still pretty popular. They, so, they are. It's just... I, I Honestly, you want to know what I think? I think just they knew the Avengers movie would do better in May. I think it, I'm I mean, sure it's, they it's did. All, it is all the Hollywood studio just, just you know, and it, uh, and, a strategy. You know, how's it going to make the most money? And you know how I feel about studios interfering. Yeah. Well, right now, I, I think I read, um, let me pull it up here, uh, but I believe they, they are on set to maybe surpass Force Awakens as the biggest opening ever. I could see that. Um, but anyway, so I'll, I'll, I'll pull it up in a little bit. You know, you know what would be funny, though, is for, uh, I, I hope this happens. What if at the end of Ant-Man and the Wasp, you get to our post credit scene, and Ant-Man or the Wasp or Michael Douglas disintegrates like the other people did as that, part of half the universe? That would kind of be very clever. Or maybe uh, the big thing in the Ant-Man series is the quantum realm. You know, what if they're in there and they're protected? Now I've heard theories about not not involving that. I've heard one theory that they're actually the the power to do that with all the stones is it's mostly using the soul stone. Mm-hmm. There's a theory that all those people are trapped inside the soul stone, right. and that it will require another sacrifice to get them back. Possibly, probably Captain America or Iron Man. Yeah. Uh, it's that. I mean, that's that's all theory. I I haven't read. I know that there's there's a whole Infinity War comic uh, arc, but I, I'd rather I'd rather I'd rather see the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, a couple of issues I have with the movie. So I did think. Oh, by the way, um, Avengers: Infinity War made an estimated six hundred and thirty million dollars at the worldwide box office for its opening weekend. Shatters the record for biggest worldwide opening held by The Fate of the Furious from last year. So sorry. Well, look, it's funny. A Vin Diesel movie beat a Vin Diesel movie. Vin, uh, yeah. So trip. I'm I'm okay knowing that it beat the fate of the Furious. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. I never watched any of those movies. But neither did I. Um, I'm a movie buff, but even I have limits. <laughs> so I some issues I had with the movie. Uh, there did seem like you know there are parts of the movie that are funny. It did seem like they were sort of in some awkward places occasionally. Like, I thought, like, uh, uh, Gamora and Star-Lord would have, like, a really emotional moment where Gamora's saying, like, you know, if I ask you to, you need to kill me. Mm-hmm. And then Drax, and I, I I love Drax, don't get me wrong, but he shows up and he's like, yeah, I've been staring at you for... It just seems like they were... It almost felt like, yeah, we do need some comic uh, levity in this movie, but it felt like it was kind of just like, ah, we gotta get this in here. I mean, that's nothing new. Marvel has always felt the need to inject comedy anywhere they can. They, they... I mean, you could say the same thing about the, the airport fight in Civil War. Should not have comedy because it's such a serious moment for the characters. Yet Tony and War Machine are making quips with each other. Yeah, when and it it's, starts. And I, I will say, I don't think this one was as quippy. It wasn't. And but there were, there were still quips there. Uh, but I, again, with your, you know, Marvel, Kevin Feige still saying to the Russo brothers, you got to throw in some jokes here and there. And I, and I get that. And, and we should have jokes. Like, I, But I, I think... Just only, I think, if they're placed well. And I they, think in certain cases, they They, they, they don't want to go full Nolan. As much as I would like them to go full Nolan, they won't. But this was... The, oh, oh, settle down. This was the most Nolan they've ever gone. Dave is the president of the uh, Chris Nolan fan club. He's also the only member uh, as well. He's but... the greatest director <laughs> living today. But that's beside the that's, point. That's another story for another day. Uh, I, th- my favorite quip... I don't know if you have a favorite quip or not, but I, I love when... Um, uh, I guess it's Thanos' sons show up and they're uh, Iron Man and Doctor Strange and the Hulk are outside and, and they're saying, well, you know, we're here to do all this, you know, blah, 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 blah. And Tony just has had enough of this crap. 
And he's like, sorry, Earth is closed today. That was a good one. <laughs> and you could just feel the frustration of just having lived through the Battle of New York. <laughs> and Ultron. And Ultron. And Civil and, War. And it, he's it like, just... really? These, these, these aliens are still attacking Earth. Come on. I, I, and that's, it, it felt like it was earned. That one did, yes. I, I liked how Thor kept referring to Rocket as Rabbit. Yeah, yeah, that was great. They um, made an excellent pairing, Thor and Rocket with, with Groot. They, they really did, yeah. I, I really want to see more of that. Um, and that's that's why I really, I think that most of these characters really are not dead. I I did, I can tell you, like, even during the, the New York scene, um, at the at the end, the, the post credits where we see... Uh, 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 Nick Fury. What's what is that person's name? Maria Hill. Maria Hill from uh, from Shield. Um, well, she works for Stark now. Okay, so I don't. I she don't got a job always. with Stark Industries after Shield fell in Winter Soldier. And, and what what has Nick Fury been up to? Last time we saw him was Ultron, wasn't it? Uh, yes. Nick Fury officially is dead. I mean, he was right. declared dead at, at, in Winter Soldier when he was shot, and at the end of Winter Soldier. He went on the run, and in Age of Ultron, he came out of hiding temporarily just to help the Avengers in Sokovia, and we have not seen him since or known when he's been so up to. I, I think Nick Fury's sole job is to help people out in their post-credits. Yeah. That, is, that is what his job is, his job title. Uh, <laughs> but I think with... When I saw, like, you have these people disappearing in New York, I just kept thinking back to, like, Left Behind... You know, the rapture, these, the rapture, where these people were disappearing, and then I thought there was a Simpsons episode where they're watching a parody of Left Behind, and there's this uh, woman in the back of a limo, and her 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 driver disappears, and she's like, oh, oh my gosh, my Christian limo driver disappeared, and so I, it I just, did feel a little, it felt a little Left Behindish, um, and that's a whole other story. It uh, it didn't have the same impact for the for those people as it did for our our heroes because. Those are characters that we know, and when it happened, it almost turned into like this cruel game of you know, who's it going to be next? Who's going to disappear right. next? It's like which are, which of your contracts are up? <laughs> yeah, and, and then each time they would show a close up of a character, you'd say, "Oh no, not 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 Black Panther." You know what's funny though is that they they had talked about, and my roommate mentioned this. Um, they had talked about, you know, is Iron Man going to die? Is Captain America going to die? Because their contracts are up. And ironically enough, the original four Avengers are the ones, are, are four of them that survive. Uh, well, they're also four of the most popular characters. They're, yeah. Marvel's thinking they're not, they're not going to get rid of all their popular characters. And you got one more movie, kid. And their contracts are up after Avengers 4. Right. So for that one, it's going to be late leading into uh, the next one. Yeah. That's going to be sort of like your A-team, or your what's left team. Yeah. So who have you got? You've got Iron Man, Cap, you've got Hulk, you've got Black Widow, you've got um, Nebula, you've got Rocket, you've got did, Thor. Did, did we see Nebula alive at the end of... We did. We did. She's on... Um, oh, right. She's, she's, on Titan she's on Titan with Iron Man, so she's right. going to help him get back to Earth. You've got Umbaku, you've got Okoye from mm -hmm. Wakanda... And you've still, I'm assuming, have Hawkeye and Ant Man, even though we didn't see them. They might. Yeah, have we don't. To bring we don't them know. In. We don't know. It'd be interesting if they addressed the Hawkeye thing in Ant Man. Um, Ant Man mm -hmm. and the Wasp. And we've got uh, presumably coming in Captain Marvel. Right. Yeah. And we got, we have to figure out like is she the like why did why did Nick Fury call her? I wonder if she has something. Uh, I'm not familiar with what her superpower is, but I wonder if it's something that will help undo. See, I, I have a feeling, my theory is with Captain Marvel next year, um, it's going to start out as a prequel. We're going to kind of have like an origin story type mm -hmm. of thing with her. But then um, it's going to sort of tie into the end of Infinity War. Where her her post credit scene might be her receiving that message. Yeah, or, or maybe even the middle of the movie. I don't know. But it, it would be interesting that to have that happen um I, uh, hey it's always fun to have a 90s movie again because yay nostalgia of course of is. course so um yeah so i guess overall um it was it was a great film i uh marvel really came through again they did you know? i i was pleasantly surprised yeah and i haven't really been disappointed by marvel i mean even even their worst movies are still pretty decent they're not terrible the the, the worst movie i mean Hands down, worst movie is Thor: The Dark World. 
I feel like I need to watch that again. It's not a terrible movie. It's just forgettable. That's the thing. If something's forgettable, but if it's watchable, it's watchable. Um, and you, I mean, you have Tom Hiddleston, and he's you he's, still got Loki in it. So it's it's not. It's not my favorite Marvel movie, but I don't think it needs to be. It it because it's so unlike the other ones. It's it's almost like I don't know that it should even count in the running as one of them. Because I feel it, it's it's like the the climax of all of them. You know, you know how I feel. I feel that way about Iron Man three. How so? That I just I don't know how that counts as a MCU movie because I think it's so stupid. What do you what do you have against Iron Man three? Because it doesn't make any sense. Are 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 you a Mandarin purist? No, I'm not. I'm I'm a I'm a non stupid purist. I thought it had a very interesting tone with uh, Shane Black's direction. It was weird that it was randomly set at Christmas, but well, that's Shane Black. I, well, we'll have to talk about it another time. But I I did not. There were a lot of things I don't like about that movie. I thought that the villain was a waste. Uh, I thought I thought it had a lot of potential, and then it was like, haha, just kidding. Um, I thought that the the people on fire was pretty cheesy. Okay, I'll give you that. You know, it was. It just seemed, and I'm like, what? Like when I watched, I watched it um for the first time. I think in the last year or so, um, I f- it felt very out of place with the previous Iron Man movies and the MCU in general. Uh, but anyway, we can talk about that. I think we might do a podcast like. What is the true worst Marvel movie? And I think we could like debate it or something. That we probably be, could. That could be fun. And then. Conversely, what's the best? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Captain America, Winter Soldier. Yeah, calm down. Um, anyway, <laughs> so we're going to wrap up this episode. Uh, we will be back um, at another point. Um, we are not just going to talk about Marvel movies on here. We're going to talk about well, film. Well, we've got Solo coming out uh, uh, yeah, yeah, in yeah, a few yeah. weeks. We will. I have uh, a lot to ramble about that. We will do a podcast on Solo, um, kind of see what's going on with that. Um, look, I want any Star Wars movie to do well. I, I don't want I, I never want a Star Wars movie to fail, but uh, we'll, we'll talk. I want to say we'll, we'll, we'll talk later. Um, thanks for listening. Uh, please visit us at dorkdaily.com. Uh, also, youtube.com slash dorkdaily. Check or you us can out. find us on Facebook. Or on Facebook at facebook.com slash dorkdaily. We've got a lot of memes. We have a lot of memes. Some of them are good. Some of them are good. You tell us. All right, we'll see you next time.